All right, so what I want to talk about today is um, a topic that's been going around for a while and uh, it's been readdressed recently um, on whether or not Crazy Talk Animator can support uh, the ability to animate more advanced type of characters, and particularly quadruped characters, you know, animals, uh, cheetahs, cats, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Um, and the reality is that yes, you can do all that. You just gotta stop thinking about what the flagship features of the software are. Yes, uh, Crazy Talk Animator does allow you to animate using uh, what they call G2 characters, Generation 2 characters, that are three-dimensional skeletal characters, uh, basically 2D sprites that are mapped against a 3D skeleton that can be assembled and animated basically as if they were puppets. Yeah, okay, we all know this. And uh, it's a very convenient way to animate. Uh, I think it's a big, it's a game changer as far as professional animation is concerned. Uh, it definitely makes things a lot easier for the non-professional and hobbyists uh, because it makes it easy for them to be able to animate. But we're not here to talk about the G2 characters. What I want to talk about is the creation of animals. And a while back, I actually you know, ran some experiments, and I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. So here is basically the results of that experiment. And uh, in that experiment, uh, what happened was that I was able to create two different types of characters uh, by using two different uh, versions of the template, I guess you can call it, uh, creating the template two different ways. Uh, here's one version that, I, that yielded an animal that looked like this. And the second version yielded an animal that looked like this one. And the second version uh, actually created uh, better results. Um, okay, I was wondering why my screen was moving by itself. <laughs> I forgot this was a video. Uh, so anyways, um, so I mean this is how you would go about trying to create an animal uh, using the G2 character skeletal structure and that's probably not the best way if uh, if you're not too experienced with this stuff um, in reality you know you actually get a little bit more power and uh, usability and control over what you animate if you just do away with the G2 stuff and just animate from scratch and uh, there's different ways you can do that in Crazy Talk. One, you can input your assets and just animate them by manipulating its transform, scale, rotation, and all that stuff. Linking them together, you can pretty much animate anything you want. Um, but you can also make them a little bit more advanced. For example, here I have this dog that I created using uh, different, like little uh, uh, props. Here's a mouse, a couple pens, an iPhone and an uh, old-fashioned telephone and yeah you can animate you know it works fine and um, so if you have a specific animal that we want to do I mean and you're actually on a um, uh, what do you call it a, a timetable or you don't want to have to deal with trying to figure out how to do it as a G2 character I mean you might not have it ever end up needing a lot of those angles anyway so um, I'm gonna show you how to do this I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, a prop if I can find one uh, let's see object uh, where do they keep the props okay scene props I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, again I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab this actually this bottle of wine that one kind of looks cool and um, I'm going to do this number to it and I'm going to the prop composer here actually I probably should have just done it in here uh, here I basically just manipulate the props any way I want uh, I'm going to bring in this pen I'm going to bring in another one. I'll put 
one there. And I'm going to put one there. Uh, let's get another bottle. There we go. We'll use this as the head. Uh, how about um, how about we use this this phone as the neck? top all right so this is how you would as assemble this stuff um, first I'm gonna make these a little smaller As I'm doing this, you're probably already asking yourselves, how the hell would would I actually animate this? And uh, you know, another another complaint that people have is like, you know, the lack of uh, the, the the tail feature and all that stuff, and and why you can't have multiple limbs and you know all those things. And you know, the fact of the matter is, if you just assemble and rig up your characters this way, you ac you can pretty much do as many limbs as you want, as many tails and objects and whatever else you want to throw in there and have it available to you it just requires a little bit more manual work and what I'm doing here is I'm taking this little red dot this is the center point pivot or the registration marker basically this is where it's like putting a little pin uh, on an object telling it this is where you're gonna rotate alright and uh, let's get another pin Know? So we basically want that pin to rotate like that. Heck, let's add another one. Let's add two or three more, just to make it like a, like an actual tail. So, you know, and the thing about this uh, particular way of rigging up objects and characters is that. You know, you're doing it manually, but you the only problem is that you're stuck with that one dimension, okay? You can't turn your character around. You can't, like, manipulate the skeleton in 3D space. You're stuck with manipulating them in 2D space. And it's no different than what you're probably doing in Flash or Anime Studio or Toon Boom anyway, except that you also have the added bonus that Crazy Talk does let you link up your objects and use uh, what's called forward kinematics. So I'm going to take this neck and I'm going to link it to the main body part here. Alright. So now I'm going to take this uh, this object, the head, and link it to the neck. Take this leg, I'm going to link it to the main body again. Take that leg, link it to the upper leg. Take this, link it to this. Take this, link it to that, and we're going to uh, link up this tail to this part, this little segment to that pin, there we go, and we're going to link that to that, and that's it. We got a fully rigged uh, angle for a character, okay, so now we go back into our actual stage, and because I had previously rotated this, it's kind of weird looking but there we go so this is our animal okay and uh, well you know maybe we want to add uh, uh, the back legs you know you can do the same thing too so I could have done that I just oops I just uh, was being lazy but you know we can have four legs if we want to the back we link it to the main body and we're good to go we do that here see it's really you know you're just not using uh, the conventional way 
that you know that's advertised you know or that's being utilized by everybody else I mean you just I mean, it's a little bit of extra work it's no big deal I mean at the end of the day it's something a little bit more functional and probably get the exact character uh, to move and behave exactly the way you want them to anyway so this might be the, the most recommended way for doing this type of thing uh, I'm gonna do one more I mean, I should have just stopped there when I had the two legs because, I mean, I'm pretty sure you get where I'm, I'm going with this. But I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. All right. So, let's see. And this is what's called forward kinematics. You know? All right, so now we go back to our stage, and we can animate our character any way we want. So let's say we want this character to start here. Um, maybe he's gonna jump. So let's start with a jump pose. How would he? All right, so at this point, uh, the animation sequence that I ended up doing took about 11 to 12 uh, minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm time-lapsing this uh, so that uh, you can still see the procedure without me having to cut anything out. Uh, at this point, I'm basically just posing the character around. I'm going to create some kind of a jumping uh, movement. And I did have a little bit of an issue there with one of the legs I forgot to attach, but no big deal. Uh, reattached it, and um, we go back in there and uh, start browsing through the timeline just kind of keep an eye on the different uh, keyframes and stuff um, yeah just kind of verifying the different uh, locations of uh, the objects in the timeline I don't know why I spent so much time on this particular part um, I think I was having some issues trying to get uh, the timeline to behave just right so I ended up just going back to the main thing and just you know just going ahead and eyeballing the rest of the animation <laughs> so now I'm basically uh, setting up the pose for the top uh, of the jump sequence and you know this is all really just manual uh, keyframing you know traditional animation uh, it's a little bit easier than typical traditional animation because you do have the advantage of having the pins and the the pivots and all the different stuff that you don't have to redo the computer pretty much takes care of all the in-betweens and all that stuff all you're doing is basically setting up the you know manipulating the character like a puppet almost and uh, just posing him so at this point I'm almost done I'm just kinda landing the character down um, really, I mean, the entire sequence took about 12 minutes to animate, uh, slightly less, um, somewhere between 11 and 12 minutes. And uh, so it's not that bad. I mean, the animation itself, it's, uh, it's fair, I mean, in general, animation is fairly tedious work. And uh, this, even if you're not taking advantage of the G2 character stuff, it's, um, it's still pretty efficient, you know, a lot more efficient than it's ever been. I think uh, if Reillusion would not have come up with uh, the the G2 multidimensional stuff, this would have been perfectly fine. It's still more advanced than a lot of the stuff out there. So there you have it. And that's how you would animate a character. And uh, in this example, I mean, you saw me build a character out of prefabricated props and uh, there's really nothing stopping you from using an external art program to pretty much um, uh, create whatever type of character you want and I'm gonna draw this real quick uh, using my mouse It's not exactly easy to draw with a mouse, but I'm giving it a good shot here. Alright, 
I'm just gonna do that. Just a nice quick drawing, nothing fancy. Okay, so I'm time-lapsing this uh, part of the procedure also because for some reason it took me a little bit longer uh, than I expected to import-export uh, the sprite into uh, the software. There was no real issues with it, it's just I had to kind of go back and do it a couple of times, so for the sake of uh, keeping the video short and not actually having to cut you know stuff out of the video I'm just gonna time-lapse it okay hope this gives you some ideas and uh, you can see that it's perfectly possible to create pretty much any kind of creature you want. It doesn't really have to be an animal or anything. The only limitation is that, you know, you're stuck within a, that one-dimensional plane and you can only animate the character in 2D space. But uh, if you want a different angle, you just make another prop using, the, you know, the new angle for that character. And there's no reason why you should be limited to what you can do. Alright, if you have any questions, uh, let me know.